Downing Street insists the Prime Minister's warning that ministers who don't campaign for Britain to remain in a reformed European Union will have to leave the government has been overinterpreted. Well, let's get more on that story. I'm joined now by the Conservative MP, uh, David Davis, who's in Westminster. David Davis, thanks very much indeed for talking to us. Earlier, it appeared that David Cameron was delivering an ultimatum to, to ministers saying, you must back me come what may after negotiation to stay in the European Union. Downing Street have since been talking to our political editor, uh, Faisal Islam, and saying those comments were overinterpreted, uh, what he meant to say that they must back him during this period of renegotiation. Are you happy to hear that clarification? clarification? Yes, I want the clarification made more clear in some ways. I mean, uh, the reinterpretation is on their part because from what I understand from other journalists, uh, they were briefing just the opposite uh, yesterday and this morning. So yes, it is vital that ordinary, decent, uh, honourable members of the government, ministers in the cabinet or junior ministers are allowed, as everybody else is, to vote the way they want, to speak the way they want, to campaign the way they want. Sure, they should wait until after the negotiation is complete. That's when they know what the deal will be and allow them to make their decision. But it should be very, made very, very clear indeed that after that point, you know, they are free men and women to do as all free men and women in Britain should do at the referendum, vote the way they want. But if the Prime Minister says, after this period of renegotiation, I'm happy with this deal, I got what I set out to get, I've achieved that, isn't it reasonable then to say, my ministers need to back me on this, I think I've done a good enough deal to say we should stay in the EU? No, the point of the referendum is it's not the government making the decision and therefore not the Prime Minister making a decision on what's good enough or what's not good enough. A referendum allows the whole people to make that decision and that should include everybody, including ministers in government. The Prime Minister may think he's done a wonderful job. Others may agree, others may disagree. I mean, pretty, pretty much guarantee that some will disagree. And priorities are different. Some people worry more about, I don't know, the, the uh, regulations and bringing those under control. Others worry more about being able to control our own future, being able to make decisions that are vital to Britain uh, on our own behalf. Those are perfectly legitimate disagreements and it would be quite wrong for somebody who in all conscience believes we should leave to be told you can't say that, you can't do that just because you're a minister. Do you think he's capable of achieving enough to make sure that all his ministers do uh, out of their own conscience and comfortably will back him. Can he achieve enough to keep all his ministers on side? It's too soon to say. I mean, the, the first thing to say is what is he aiming for? Is he aiming for the constitutional changes that some want? Is he aiming for the control of immigration that some want? All those things. And then secondarily, will the Europeans deliver it? Now, we don't know either of those facts yet. So it's too soon to say. I hope he is. You know, I would much rather vote to stay in a reformed Europe in which we can, as it were, take back control of the bits of our destiny which we think are vitally important. But, you know, I have to wait too to see what the outcome is. Well, yes, I mean, we've learnt some of what he's setting out to achieve, haven't we? He's talked about uh, wanting restrictions on Europeans' eligibility for, for British benefits. He's talked about a guarantee that the UK won't join the euro. He's also talked about an end to the, an EU drive towards ever closer union. If he achieved those elements, would you be happy to back him? Well, look, the, the guarantee that we won't join the euro is our call anyway. There's no requirement uh, in the union for us to do that. The uh, stopping the drive towards ever closer union, of course, is sensible, but it won't apply to other members. How does it apply to us? Do we, for example, get an opt-out on things that are critical to our future, just as the French have done in the past? Uh, if the answer to that critical question is yes, then I'll be favourably disposed towards staying in. If the answer is no, then my inclination will be the other way. But we, you know, we haven't heard any of that laid out in detail yet. So what are, what are your red lines? Well, the critical one is the right to decide. If, if something comes up that the rest of the Union says we want to do A, and Britain says, no, that's not in our national interest, that's seriously at odds with our history or our traditions or our legal system or, what, or our interests, we should be able to say, absolutely no, we want a red card for that, we want to opt out of that. If we can do that, then, then that's really the, the main building block. And meanwhile, we heard um, Nigel Farage over the weekend saying that he would get cracking on a, on a, a campaign for Britain to pull out of Europe. How do you feel about him entering into that? Do you feel he's a, a, the right person to, to lead a campaign uh, for a no vote? 
Look, it's not for me to say who can and can't do anything in this. This is a referendum. It's open to everybody to do what they want. But the concerns about Europe extend far beyond those who voted for U UKIP, certainly far beyond those who are members of UKIP. It's a much wider issue. There are members of the Labour Party who are concerned about it. There are certainly lots of members of the Tory Party. There are even some Lib Dems who are uh, concerned about it. So, you know, I think this is uh, an issue which is far bigger than any one party and certainly a, a devil of a lot bigger than any one man. Is this an issue, is Europe going to be an issue that once again tears the Tory party apart? It shouldn't do. I mean, that's one of the concerns that I had this morning when the, the, the first briefing came out, that people couldn't uh, vote and uh, campaign the way they wanted to, because that would have turned what was going to be a perfectly civilised and sensible and decent debate into a bitter argument. And none of us want that. None of us want to go there. We want to have an intelligent debate about the future of our country, uh, what our country will look like in 10, 20, 30, 40 years' time. Uh, and that should be done from the point of view of mutual respect, not from constraints, not from trying to bias the system or stack the cards, stack the deck one way or the other. It should be done on a fair basis where everybody has a say. That's what's important about this issue. OK, David Davis, very interesting to get your take on this. Thank you very much. Thank you.